right, welcome back to part three of this VLANs trunks and routing and so on video. In this part, we are going to see what we can do to optimize this topology just a little bit. Get rid of this router over here and add our multi-layer switch in. Okay, so the first thing I think we ought to do is I'm going to target this switch in the middle, mostly because it's the center of the topology and we don't have to send traffic maybe from this host or these hosts over here um, all the way from one side of the topology to the other so maybe what we'll do is we'll take this switch out now the first thing we gotta figure out is these ports here so maybe I had to label these I could look them up and when we're doing you know our install we could say well it's uh, it's my trunk lines and that would be accurate but I'm gonna go ahead and provide a label here anyway just so that you know while we're while we're following along here and when the switch disappears this is PC5 so this should be a 0 slash 5 here and this should be a 0 slash 7 okay so here we go so I'm gonna we're gonna delete the links so one two three four I don't want to get rid of the switch in case we decide to do something with it so now we got a couple of switches up here and we're gonna put this one right back where the other one was okay whoops that's not what I want I want this kind of line I did forget to label that one. Oh, for heaven's sakes let's get a connection here there we go I'm gonna assume I did two, maybe I did 23. Well, let's, let's do this. This is how I would tell what link I should use if I didn't have a label or didn't remember. So we're gonna go down to the end ports here and we see that 23 was a trunk. So I went 23 to 23 here, I suppose that makes sense. And so we are gonna go 23 to 23 now. And on this side, let me see, I was using a crossover cable, so why not? 24, maybe. And let's hope it was 24 over here. Okay. Now, all I did was replace a switch. Obviously, the VLAN configuration was not, not carried over. Let's see, I'm going to try something on the fly here. I've never done it with Packet Tracer. I do it all the time with real devices. But let's see if it works. So I've got this switch here. All right. And we'll do this. Show run. And we can see that we've got the VLAN assignments in there and the trunking assignments in there, right? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here and we're going to say copy and I'm going to go to my new switch no thank you and we'll say enable and config T and maybe we'll do our host name and we'll call this multi-layer switch zero like that and then I'm gonna paste in those config lines which is handy now I've got an error here but I know why that is so I'll show you here why that is in a second so that's 23 and 24 came up with an error because this is a different kind of switch but if we do control Z we do a show VLAN here we can see that the cut and paste or the copy and paste is certainly one way to move a complex topology configuration around. The problem on port 24 is this. This is a multi-layer switch and it doesn't assume what kind of encapsulation you want to do. So I have to tell it that before I want to be a trunk. So let's go back to those ports. We'll do 23 first. And this is the the, um, the command that throws an error, switch port mode trunk, right? So what we're gonna do first is switch port 
trunk encapsulation, and then we're going to say dot one q. Now dot one q is IEEE 802.1q, so that's Cisco speak for it. And then we can do the switch port mode trunk, and we have to do the same thing on port 24. So we'll do the encapsulation. Now, what is encapsulation talking about? Well, encapsulation is what we mean when we say, oh, we're going to put something in an Ethernet frame or a token ring frame or an 802.11 frame. We say that the data and the IP packet are encapsulated in a particular frame. So when we move down between layers, we're encapsulating the layer above us in a particular format. And so in this particular case, when traffic goes across a trunk, the encapsulation that we're going to use is 802.1q. Now this would seem to indicate that there's more than one trunking protocol out here and that's absolutely true. Uh, Cisco has its own ISL formatting, but the industry standard is 802.1q. Now let me show you one other thing while I'm here. If I do a show int f0 slash 24, I get a certain kind of output. But of course, with all of these commands, a lot of times there's, there's arguments here. So if I do a, a question mark, I can see that there's a couple of other things here. So if I do switch port, it talks to me about things like what kind of encapsulation I'm doing. So in this case, we've decided on 802.1q. All right. Now I'm going to show you one other thing here. We're going to revisit it in a minute because that's another part of this part of the video series. And that is what uh, VLANs are enabled on this particular trunk. And there's two things that are really interesting here. One is that all VLANs are allowed to go over our trunk lines. And that's a default for Cisco. It's not a default for all vendors. And the other thing that's interesting is that pruning VLANs enabled. What VLAN is missing out of this? Well, VLAN 1. It's because we don't like to prune VLAN 1 or the native VLAN. So if I change the native VLAN, the pruning VLANs enabled would also change. So right now we're allowing all VLANs and that's what's important to us. Okay, now we've replaced this switch with another switch. That's all that we've done at this point. And so let's just see if my pinging all around is going to work. So in the, in the time that I've taken here, maybe we got some ARP tables that are, are being uh, updated. So we'll just let this go and then I'll fix any mistakes I made. Oh, I guess it's working. Now we'll also check stuff to, uh, let's see, we got 12.3, just to make sure that everybody's reachable. All right. So that looks okay. We went all the way across. Maybe we'll check that, that machine above there, 12.7 and 11.5. Whoops, that's not going to work. All right, destination host and reachable. That's from the router because the router doesn't know where the, uh, where the one net is. It's because it's not part of the topology. All right. Might have to re-arp for this guy. There we go. All right, so everybody's reachable. So all that we've done at this point is replaced, you know, one switch with another. But as we know, this is a multi-layer switch. Now for most folks, that means that I can do routing between VLANs. Now multi-layer switches, that's a subject for a whole other day but multi-layer switching is really about understanding more about the topology. So this device has the potential to understand more about the topology than any one single router or any one single switch can. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is two things. I'm going to, we're going to delete we're going to delete um, these two links. So now my router is out of the topology. So that means that I have no ability to go in between VLANs. And so what should happen is this set of pings that I was just successful in doing simply won't work. And that should make sense because I just killed off my, my default gateway. Okay, so I have no routing in between VLANs now. No routing in between nodes at all. Okay, so what can we do about that? Well, we're going to go to this particular device and we're going to do a couple things. First up, we're going to say, well, multi-layer switch, I'd like you to do a little routing. So we're going to enable IP routing on this device. Now what this automatically means is that I can get a routing table like I had on the router, but 
I haven't told the switch yet about the networks. Now when you're doing switching and routing, it's a little bit different because over here on this router, if we take a look at where we configured IP addresses, we did it on particular physical interfaces. Okay. On a switch, it's a little bit different. On a switch, we're going to attach these IP addresses to VLANs. Now, VLANs have the ability to touch more nodes than single router interfaces, uh, or at least more nodes that are directly connected to the switch. So let's go to int VLAN 11, okay? And we are going to do an IP address here. And so we're going to say 172.16.11.254. In exactly the same way that we did on the uh, on the router. So now let's go to VLAN 12, and we will say you are 12.254. Now we'll let that come up for a sec, and let's do a show IP route here, and we can see that we have a routing table very similar to what we would see on our router. We are directly connected to the uh, the 11 and the 12 nets, and they're connected to VLAN 11 and 12. So there we go. Now, if we bounce right over here to this PC, and we try to do that last ping again, we're going to we'll see if this works, but I suspect we're going to have a problem, and that is that the this PC when it does its host routing table alright we see that that was momentary delayed so what I was referring to is that this PC believes that its default gateway was this router and so a lot of times what we see is the table updates take a little bit of extra time because the router update let me say that a different way the MAC address associated with the default gateway was different than the new default gateway. So um, I'll show you what I'm talking about and then we'll be really clear about it. So this is the ARP table entry for this node's default gateway. Previously, the default gateway was this router's F0 slash 1, and that had a MAC address. Now it is this switch's VLAN 12 and it has a MAC address associated with it as well. So we had to have these updates made throughout the topology. So anybody that has the old MAC address in its ARP table would have to have either the ARP table timeout or the link to go up and down again to update this entry. Okay, but it looks like we are safe right now because it took me long enough to do this at timed out. But we'll see if everybody can communicate with everybody else. And I guess we'll try, let's try somebody that we haven't talked to yet. So again, this is, this is really about updating ARP tables that have timed out, but if it's longer than that, it might be that you have a bad or old ARP table entry. So we can do things like show int VLAN 11, you know, and we can see that there are MAC addresses associated with it. Now, interestingly, just as an aside here, every port on a switch also has a MAC address, and the switch itself has a MAC address. Okay, so we can see now that nodes that are on this side of the topology, um, if they want to talk to nodes on this side of the topology, right, are going straight through the middle of the switch. But the, the, the real demonstrable difference is that if these two are talking to each other, I don't have to go back across here and then up and down. And the routing decision for nodes over here gets made a little bit closer to them. Now, nodes on this switch, right, switch zero, all the way on the left, still have to go over here for a routing statement. And we can actually trace that through. Um, let's do our simulation here. And we'll just watch one go and we'll look at the encapsulation again. So I'm going to go 11.2 to maybe 12.4. So we'll ping 
uh, 12.4. So we're not ARPing for our default gateway because we already know where the default gateway is, right? We've talked to this PC already. But we can see when we go up to this switch, just for fun, that the MAC address that we're going to use here, that looks a lot like the, well, let's do it, we'll put it there. And we'll take a look here. This is the MAC address associated with that particular uh, VLAN on the switch. And so this frame has a layer two encapsulation in uh, Ethernet that is sending it off to the host default gateway, which happens to be VLAN uh, 11. And then, of course, the, the communication is actually between 11.2 and 12.4. So if we go across here, we know now that we are going to be doing 802.1Q trunking, and there's the encapsulation change with the protocol ID or the type at layer two, and tagged for VLAN uh, 12. And oh, well, now we got a default gateway. The default gateway is now trying to find out who the um, who the destination is, right? So we come back across here. We're on VLAN 12. Well, actually, let me be really clear about something. Okay, so um, when this goes across from switch zero, whoa. When it goes across from switch zero, all right, I don't want to go too fast here. Right, uh, PC2 is on VLAN 11, so we should make sure that we're really clear about that. So this one is got the 802.1Q encapsulation, but it's, it's VLAN 11 when it starts off. And so remember that that had gone across, whoops, goes across, and then we're after the multi-layer switch, we're out to the multi-layer switch, and the multi-layer switch now needs to find the MAC address for PC4, which it has not communicated with. And so the what happens is there's a frame on this side and then it gets a multi-layer switch and when it goes back down to PC4 we have to build another switch because you know it's on a different network. All right, we need to build a different frame because it's on a different network. Okay, um, let's see. So we're on the switch, we're going across, we're going back to back and forth between uh, PC4, yep, and the the default gateway. The default gateway now is VLAN 11, so we're that's why we're tagging, or I'm sorry, VLAN 12. So that's why we're tagging for 12 now. All right, so we'll just keep the simulation going. Now the ICMP can be built because the first attempt would have timed out because we're doing all these ARP updates, and we keep going. So this is the ICMP going across to the switch on VLAN 11. Goes to the switch. Now remember, this is where the routing decision is being made now. So we're not going up and down to a router anymore. And let's see, when it went back across, we're back on VLAN 12 now. All right, these are just the answers and so on and so forth. So if we look at what's going on here. We'll go back to real time. There we go, success. So at this point, what have we done? Well, we got rid of this router. Uh, we optimized the topology a little bit, but that's not really the big deal. We got rid of a device by replacing one of our switches with a multi-layer switch. So overall in this topology, we eliminated a switch and a router because we started doing VLANs, we could get rid of the switch, and because we did IP routing on a switch, we used a multi-layer switch, we could get rid of the router. Whoops. Okay. Well, let's do one more thing in this series of videos. We know that I've got this, you know, VLAN 11 box that I'm creating. And if we were actually going to take a look at our topology, we would say, well, this is in the VLAN 11 box way over here. 
we've got a VLAN 12 box and we sort of put you know all of these nodes together in that box and we did that with trunking but if you notice over here we only have uh, on switch 3 we only have VLAN 12 working so we'll add that you know that label so you might say for security reasons things like that I don't want any other VLANs but VLAN 12 here so what I could do is I could say well I am not going to allow certain VLANs to cross this trunk boundary and so if we take a look at our trunking capability right and I'll just remind us about uh, the the allowed VLANs here. So that I think that's port 24. So we go show int f0 slash 24, oops, 24, switch port, right? We remember that we're doing, you know, 802.1q tagging, and that we've got initially all VLANs are enabled, and that we can prune VLANs away. So what is pruning? Well, pruning is where you have a topology out there and you've decided for one reason or another to allow or disallow particular VLANs. And so what we do sometimes is we prune VLANs off of trunk lines and therefore limit their access to certain parts of the network. And so what I might do is go into that particular trunk line. So I go F0 slash 24 and I say, um, switch port trunk and then I start going well wait a minute what are the commands that are available and we can see that I can decide whether or not this is going to be the native VLAN or uh, what I'm going to allow now the um, the now the current native VLAN is of course uh, VLAN 1 and that's not really what I, we're about in this particular video so what I'm after is the allowed so what are we going to allow well um, when you know in a large topology I would do a range of VLANs but in this particular case I'm just gonna say I want to allow VLAN 12 okay now did that change very much as far as the operation at this point? And the answer is no. But we can see that that I've, I've done something here. This it doesn't say all anymore, right? Okay. Well, what would happen if I connect my lonely little PC8 out here? So I'm going to say. Well, I mean, before we do that, let's just verify that it works. Still, that we haven't done anything, you know, to, to break things. So we'll say that that works, right? Now, I'm still I'm going across to somebody that's on VLAN 11. So how did that work? Well, because remember that when it starts off here, right, it's actually on VLAN 12 because that's that's here. We don't wind up on VLAN 11 until we're onto that network over there. But there's nobody on VLAN 11 over here yet. And just to verify, you know, I can get to I don't know 12.72. So everything still works okay so now let's take PC 8 and we will connect it down here to port 8 and then on the switch we will say that I want port 8 to be part of VLAN 11 and actually what I'll do maybe is we'll do to really understand the impact here I'm going to do a couple of couple of nodes. So PC9 is also going to be out here and we will do PC9 we'll also put it on the 172.16.11 net. Okay so we got two nodes on the 11 net here. So everything looks pretty good. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is we'll see, um, well, we'll do, we'll do a couple of tests. All right, so the first thing, 
Let's see, I can't remember. Did I put that in VLAN? I did. Okay. So it looks like... No, I didn't. Let's do... Let's do port 9. We'll put that in VLAN 11. And we'll do a show VLAN just to make sure that we have what we think we have. So port 6 is in VLAN 12. 8 and 9 are in VLAN 11. We're missing port 24, which is a trunk. Okay. Um, and so the first thing that I want to do is from, well, we'll do it from these PCs. We're, we're just going to try to ping between 11.8 and 11.9. Okay, so that's up and running. So let's try this. So we're going to do some ARPing first, right? Now I suppose what we could do is also we could say, well, let's let's follow the the path here. Oops. Let's move these a little bit. All right, so let's do our let's do our ping again. Oops, did I forget to configure? <laughs> I may have forgotten to configure this device. I did. I forgot. All right, so that's oops. That's all right. Mistakes were made. Mistakes happen. Fortunately, it wasn't at any critical juncture. Oh, no, two fifty-four. All right, so we got our gateway. Let's make sure I did everything right. All right. Okay, so let's try this again. So we are now going to go to eleven point nine. So here we are, arping. So the the clue that I had not uh, done the configuration right was there was no ARP traffic. So it goes down to the switch. Up to everybody on VLAN, uh, the same VLAN, right? VLAN 11. And then across any trunk, wait a minute, it's not going across the trunk. I wonder why. Because I didn't allow VLAN 11. I allowed VLAN 12, but I didn't allow VLAN 11. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that locally, VLAN 11 is allowed to communicate. Right, so this works. So these two nodes, are on VLAN 11 and we did see that they were able to communicate. The hint that we just saw is that that ARP message did not go across this trunk. Now let's try to ping our default gateway. Uh oh, that does not look good. So if we're watching the simulation, we're ARPing for our default gateway and it's going out on VLAN 11, so who's he looking for here? We're looking for the MAC address that goes along with the default gateway MAC address, or the default gateway IP address. But it's only popping up on VLAN 11, or it's not going across the trunk. And again, that's because I didn't allow this particular VLAN on the trunk. Okay, so let's go back to real time. And let's try to ping from a valid node. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, I'm going to ping 11. I don't know, 9, 9 or 8, doesn't really matter, from PC6. And we'll go ahead and run our simulation again here. And off we go. So there it is. Now the this PC already knows what its default gateway is. So it goes up to the switch. The switch sends this across. Why is this going across? Because it's tagged as VLAN. Whoops. Let me grab the uh, grab the right one. There we go. Okay, from this PC on VLAN 12, it's tagged on VLAN 12. Okay, so now we're going to go across. Now coming back from the multi-layer switch. 
the multi-layer switch says, well, look, I know where that is. And he does tag it as VLAN 11. So it's able to go across and come back because this switch hasn't pruned any VLANs yet. So of course it gets all the way across there to the other switch. That's a demonstration of just how far broadcast traffic can go. All right, so let's see what happens on the next one. So it goes across, says, please help me with getting to this particular destination. The switch says, okay, but it's ARPing again. Why is it ARPing again? Well, this machine over here was never able to answer because we're not allowing that particular VLAN to go back across the trunk. So it can never answer the default gateways query for its MAC address. Okay, so we can see that, you know, the, the middle switch here, multi-layer switch, still sending things back. I only disallowed VLAN 11 by allowing only VLAN 12 on switch 3. And if I wanted to be really complete, I would say, well, I'm going to go through all my switches and in both directions disallow whatever whatever VLANs I'm after. All right, so let's let's fix things. Let's undo the effect of pruning and we'll see if that's that'll fix everything for everybody. And so I'm going to go to intf 0 slash 24 and the way that you would allow more VLANs or you would allow all VLANs is that you would just simply do sort of undo what we did before so allowed VLAN and then there's a couple of keywords right I could say all or I could say maybe a range so I could do 11 to 12 like that and we'll see if it likes the syntax. It appears to like that. So show int, oops, int f0 slash 24, switch port. <clears throat> and we can see that I've allowed 11 and 12 right there. Okay. Well, now let's go right back to our PC and we'll try to, and we'll try to, uh, to ping. Now we got ARPS to do. Hey, look, that appears to work now. All right, so that is undoing what we did, but also, whoops, sort of, you know, p being very particular about the VLANs that we want to allow. And this is actually one of those security uh, tools that you can use to minimize the traffic that's flowing all around your network. All right, I'll do one more thing and then we'll call it a day here. Uh, we know that a router has an ARP table and a routing table. So we already know that we did the, uh, the routing table for the switch, and now it looks about the same except that it's attached to VLAN 11 and 12. But we can also take a look at the ARP table, and this is the ARP table entries that this particular router slash switch knows about. So these are all the MAC address entries, and then the time associated with each one of those and the VLAN to which each is connected. So there we have it. So this multi-layer switch behaves in many ways exactly the same as a router, but it also has a MAC address table. So it knows where the MAC addresses are connected. So there we have, yeah, now this is something that would not be present on a router, of course. So in this particular video, we try to cover all of these things we've talked about packet flow and the pruning in this particular part of it and the table updates associated with all of the changes that we did. We did the trunking in VLANs. Well that does it, right? Routers, trunks, tables, packets, packet flows and you know 802.1Q etc etc. Now Packet Tracer is very close to the actual deployment so what you saw in Packet Tracer today is very very similar. There are some differences Right, but the commands are very similar, the behavior is very similar. Uh, so what you saw here is exactly what I would have done in, in a lab environment or not on an actual operating topology. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on VLANs, trunks, and routing. Like and subscribe if I helped, and hey, may those VLAN trunked packets always reach their destinations.